I really appreciate you coming along to this late night show here in the off grid garage from sunny Australia. It is not hot anymore. We are in the middle of autumn. No, we are at the beginning of autumn. We are in the middle of autumn. And I can already see a massive decline of solar production here from our new solar roof. I'll tell you more about this in a later video. But I'm not convinced we can make it through the winter. We probably have to upgrade the solar a bit. <laughs> but in tonight's video, it is already very, very late. But I thought I'd come to the off-grid garage here to make a quick video about some requests I had under my video. Yeah, and there was the battery empty again. I should really check my cameras before I start recording. Well, some requests I had under my videos in regards to the to the um, to the Lynx shunt, the Victron Lynx shunt. Uh, let me quickly the Victron Lynx shunt. And this is not so much about the technical situation issues features of this device it is more about the settings and people are actually true i have made a video about the settings i have set so i thought why not come out quickly and show you the settings i have so um because this is not a smart device you cannot connect directly via bluetooth to the uh, link shunt you can only use the remote console of victron to get into some of the settings or you can use the Victron via M and sneak in from the back door to get access to some other settings. And I want to show you how to sneak into the back door of the Lynx shunt first. So you go to your Victron via M and you select the SPED calibration center, your Servo GX or your Raspberry Pi, whatever you have. Now it connects through the internet back to our servo. We are going to devices and here you can see the Lynx shunt connected to VE can and we connect to it I'm uh, still trying to connect to it. Now it's connected, fully connected. This was like 30, 40 seconds. And most of the time you can see some of the numbers of the Lynx shunt. So today is our lucky day because it shows us almost all of the numbers on the display, except the consumed ampere hours. Usually there is one, two, or even three of the numbers missing in your display. So anyway, we want to go into the settings. We click on battery. And here we can see all the parameters, all the settings you can access. So at the top, of course, you've got your overall battery capacity, 645 amp hours in my case, or so the two Seplos batteries, plus the QSO battery here in parallel, makes this capacity. The next one is the charged voltage. This is one of the parameters you have asked for me to explain. This is when the smart shunt recognizes the battery is fully charged and starts the reset process, the reset to 100%. But it also needs the tail current and the charge detection time. So all these three parameters need to be met to reset the smart shunt to 100%. So we need to be on 55 volts in my case. The tail count needs to be under 2%. So 2% would be, 1% would be 6. So 12, so 55 volts under 12.9 amps and this for three minutes. If these three set parameters are met, then it resets to 100%. In between, we've got the discharge floor, and this is only a setting for a calculation. This is how long it would take to discharge the battery to exactly 0% state of charge. So in my case here, this would be 10 days because there's almost nothing connected at the moment. But you can also set this one to, for example, 10% discharge floor. That means it gives you the calculation down to 10% state of charge. And you can always keep in mind that you have another 10% left for emergency purposes, for example. And you can also set this to 20 or 25% or even 30% if you want to. And the shunt calculates the time until it is discharged 
to your set value. But in my case, because I'm doing battery testing here, I want to discharge the battery really to 0% until the BMS turns off. And I also want the shunt to calculate the time down to 0% state of charge. We also have the pure code exponent, which is 1.01 in my case. For lithium batteries, this is very close to one. And this is actually a parameter coming from lead acid batteries. Because the higher the load on a lead acid battery, the less capacity you can pull from it. And this setting here gives the shunt an indication how much it needs to factor this in. And we have seen from many tests we have done here on the workbench that this is not the case with lithium. So regardless if I discharge with 10 amps or 100 amps, the capacity I can use of lithium batteries is almost the same. So that's why the factor is almost at one. And I have set a charge efficiency factor of 99%. This is something we have tested as well here. If I discharge a lithium battery, how much power do I need to put in again to fully charge it again? And this is again very close to 100%. There's not much loss with lithium batteries. The current threshold I have never changed. This one sits on 10 milliamps here. This is the resolution of the shunt it measures. And depending on your setup, so if you have very small loads or very large loads, you can change this parameter to make the shunt more precise. But if you go too small with this number, you're measuring all the noise as well, even there is no real current flowing. And honestly, I've never changed this parameter, neither in the Lynx shunt nor in the Victron Smart shunt. So usually you don't have to change the setting at all, unless you have a lot of very small loads or a lot of very large loads. So again, you can adapt the resolution of your shunt with this setting. The time to go averaging period sits on three minutes by default. I've never changed this either, neither in this shunt nor in the other one. Ah, oh. the consumed ampere hours have just arrived. Look at this, we are fully populated. I've never seen this before. <laughs> so this average time of three minutes is what the shunt measures and then uses for calculating your remaining time. So again here, if you have loads with lots of peaks starting motors constantly, you probably want to lower this value a bit so you're actually measuring the peaks as well. While if you set these parameters a bit higher, it actually smooths out these peaks and it's not factoring them in as much to calculate the remaining time of your battery. So I would say for most people you can leave this on three minutes because the algorithm in the shunt will adapt the time remaining anyway as you go. Yeah, and then we have a state of charge we can actually set manually. This is probably only important at the very first startup of the Lynx shunt and you can give it a rough figure of your state of charge of your batteries. The same if you power off your Lynx shunt, it will forget the state of charge. So if this happens, you can set a rough figure again and then with the next full charge, it will recalibrate to 100% anyway, as I have just explained. You can also synchronize the state of charge to 100%. So if your three parameters, the charge voltage, the charge detection time and the tail current are not triggering your 100%, you can press this button manually and reset the shunt to 100% manually. And the zero current calibration button is if your shunt shows actually a current flowing, even there's nothing connected at all, you can calibrate it here to zero. I have never done this ever with any of my shunts because there's always something going on here in the off-grid garage. Well, and then we go back to the main menu. We go into the relay function. So the um, Lynx shunt has a built-in relay. You can use the dry contacts to... Um, um, you can start an active balancer in your battery, for example, where you can turn on a charger or a generator if your voltage is low, or you can use the built-in thermostat to measure the temperature at your battery and can either turn on a heating pad if it gets too cold or a cooling fan if it gets too hot in summer. And you can also set a minimum close time here for starting a generator, for example, or a relay off delay, totally depending on your setup and what you want to do with this relay. And here in the alarm settings of the Lynx shunt, you can have a fuse blown alarm. I'm not sure if this actually works because as you may remember, it communicates with the Victron Peter and obviously monitors the status of your fuses in the Peter. In case one of the fuses blows, it sends you an alarm on your mobile phone. You've got the low state of charge alarm, the low voltage alarm and the high voltage alarm. I've disabled them all because with all the battery testing I'm doing here, I'm getting too many alarms anyway already. And I don't need the Lynx shunt to send more alarms. And you also have the high and low temperature alarm as well. And these are pretty much all the settings and parameters you can change in the Victron Lynx shunt. 
And I quickly want to show you how to access the settings via the remote console. So we're changing to our SPAT calibration center. Go into the settings, select the links shunt, and these are all the status parameters, history, settings. So there's our settings button. We go in here and battery bank. So here you can see we've got access to the same settings as we had just via the VRM. So capacity, charge voltage, tail current, current threshold, time to go, average period, the discharge flow is in here. You can sync it manually to 100%. So everything is still here, just the order is a bit different. The discharge flow is actually further down in this list for some reason. Here we can set the alarms again, which are turned off in my case. And here are all the functions for the relay as well. And you can also reset the links shunt to factory default again. Also, if you click on the three dots, you can go to product info and it gives you general information about the name and the serial number and stuff like this, but also a firmware number. And I don't know how to do an actual firmware update on the Lynx shunt because, well, there's no Bluetooth connection. So the only way it communicates with the outside world is through the Servo GX at the moment, but I've never seen any updates coming through for this Lynx shunt. And I would really like to see a firmware update for the Lynx shunt to show DC power. And this is actually one of the major disadvantages of the Lynx shunt, that it doesn't show any DC power at all. But I want to show you more about the features and the flaws of this very expensive fuse holder, as some people say. So this was more a workshop video here to go through all the settings of the Lynx shunt. But as you can see, the settings are almost the same as for the smart shunt. But here we have the additional functionality of the relay. We can program for temperature, state of charge, voltage, or even if one of the fuses is blown in the Victron Peter. So the Lynx shunt with all of these features is actually not a bad device. Okay guys, as always, I link all this information on my website as well. Link is down below. It is part of a whole series where I introduce, where I explain all the settings of the JK BMS, the Victron Solar Charge Controllers, the Victron Smart Shunt, how to operate the Zeplos BMS with the Victron system together. There are also screenshots with all my settings and links to the videos which explain these settings for these specific devices. So whenever I change a parameter here, I take a new screenshot and upload this to the website. So this is very up to date. And over time, we will have a very good collection of settings which actually work and um, also make sense. OK, guys, I think that's it for this late night show video. Leave your comments down below if you are using the Lynx shunt as well and what your experience with it is. I'm always I'm always very interested to hear from you as well. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your great support here on the channel, especially to all these beautiful people who are supporting the channel financially. And some of them do this on a regular basis. So thank you very much for that. Until the next video, guys, you stay charged, stay safe. And thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye. Tch. Very expensive fuse holder. But uh, I must agree.